Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Islamic Idolatries. Today, let's talk Tezkiyah. In the last episode, we discussed the importance of making toba or repentance, turning away from all things that are idolatrous. So quickly, let's revisit what idolatry is and what an idol is. An idol is a false conceptualization, a false unhealthy conceptualization of people, places, things, or ideas as true when they're in fact lies or take us off track from the truth. So once we turn away from this process, so in Islam, we are readers. We are to read all the signs around us. Everything around us is a sign pointing toward truth. Everything within us is a sign pointing us toward truth. So we need to see reality as it really is. We need to see with clarity and to have certainty as we come into, we go from immaturity to maturity. And the way we come into maturity is we have to see things in an accurate manner, in an authentic manner, inshallah. So anything, could, anything like I said, people, places, things, or ideas can be falsely conceived of and can misdirect us and, and get us off track and bring us into an unhealthy and toxic state bodily, mentally, in relationship to others. So we need to correct these things. So we do that by beginning a toba process, by turning away from that which is unhealthy and toxic in thought, word, and deed toward ourselves and others. And we go, sometimes we need a hard detach Sometimes it's a little bit more of a, of, a, of a process to come out of, say, an addiction. And we have to take a scientific, systematic approach to this and a prayerful approach to this to come out of that which is negative and unhealthy. And now, once we, once we see, so we have to first see the problem as it really is and address it in a healthy manner. So now we go through the purification process, through tezkiah. So how do we go through a tezkiah process? Well, we have tezkiah of our body and we've got tezkiah of our mind now the heart is the mind within the mind and as you pro as you purify the body and the mind you're automatically purifying the heart and really when we get down to it the heart is already pure in a state of fitra but it's got overlays of illusion and delusion so we are in a very toxic world currently we are surrounded by so many falsities, so many lies. This is the time of Dajjal, of the deceiver, of the deceptor, the deceptive one. So we should be looking for falsity and illusion and delusion all around us and within us. And we need to now purify that. So let's start with the body. We, get, we always have to start with where we are at. You know, like, so Salah plays an important role in this. We are in a broken state. And so Salah can help to unify and reharmonize our body and our minds. And the sonic vibration of Quran, it has a, it, 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 we sonically bathe in Quran. And we need to m be mindful in our motions as we move through every position within Salah. You know, all the positionings of our hands, of our arms, as, as the, it, to observe the bones settle into place, to observe the body, the expansions, the contractions, the movement of blood, the movement of, of body sensations. So we observe m movement and stillness. So, so law plays a key role, and so does psalm. We're going to discuss higher levels of psalm because most of us, we think about psalm just in terms of abstaining from food and drink and sexual intimacy during the 30 days of Ramadan. Some people extend it out to Mondays and Thursdays following Sunnah. Some go to the white days, but psalm extends to, it can extend to anything. So it's abstaining from unhealthy and toxic words unhealthy and toxic actions you know um unhealthy and toxic inputs and outputs so we have to consider we have to be very real with ourselves very honest with ourselves if we're on the path of truth and because we want to come into authenticity and maturity and excellence and then beautify our lives through egolessness so as far as Tezkiah of the body is concerned, one of the things that I would encourage us to do is to read the labels on everything. We should be reading, Ikra is, is the first ayah. So we should be literally reading everything. People think that that means just the Quran. No, no, we should read everything around and within us. 
And when you go to the grocery store, read those labels. If you need a chemistry dictionary to understand what's in there, then it is toxic for your body. If it is toxic for your body, it's guaranteed toxic for your mind. It will negatively impair, it will impair your cognitive ability, your ability to think, to reason well, to utilize systematic logical thinking process. It will also jeopardize your intuitive abilities. We are intuitive beings by design. Intuitive reason is a very deep level of reading inner and outer reality. And as we come into maturity and purification, then naturally certain innate abilities will come to the forefront, inshallah. So Tazki of the body, to read the labels on everything, when people tell you things about themselves, if they tell you that they're out clubbing and, and, and you know sleeping with anybody they can, then believe them and, and pray for them. Don't feel pity for them. That's ugly and dirty but cultivate compassion for them and try to understand where they're coming from, but do not engage yourself in these behaviors. And we need to protect ourselves from those. If, if people are telling you, if they're gossiping in really horrible ways, then what are they saying behind your back, you know? So we don't want to be drawn into unhealthy thoughts, words, or actions. We wanna purify our bodies, we wanna purify our minds, we wanna purify our environments. So anything that is like, so I started off with reading the labels in grocery stores, but that would include anything that you're going to put onto your body, that you're going to put in your body through drinking or eating, because many things called foods are not actually nutrition, nutritional. They're false foods. We're in a world full of false foods, false inputs, lots of poisons and toxins. Check your medicine cabinet and look at, like, look at all those medicines. We do not want to put things into our bodies that harm other creatures like mammals, etc. Like really look, look, look deeply into it. If it harms other creatures, mammals, if it harms insects, then guaranteed it harms you. If you're spraying bug poison, you are spraying poison that not only poisons bugs, but it accumulates within the body, within the fat, within the blood, and then it causes cancers over long term. So we do not want poisons in our households. We want to go, our cleaning products should be as clean, as pure and as ethical as possible. Everything should be as pure and as ethical. That's, that's what it comes down to. In Islam, it's all about purity and ethics. So really consider this as we go through the Tobin and Tazkiyah process. We'll talk more about it. But for Tazkiyah, remember, it's, it's, we've got to purify the body and we've got to purify the mind. So we want to have the, the most pure and healthy, I mean, pure and ethical inputs and the most pure and ethical outputs. So what we, what we speak to others, what we, in our, in our actions toward others, should be as pure and ethical as possible. And what we absorb through the sense doors, through the tongue, through the nose, through the ears, through the skin, you know, through, uh, you know, taste, touch, sound, smell, all the different senses. We need to make sure that these inputs are as pure, they, they are as pure and ethical as possible. And so, you know, we should, we should be watching things that are going to be uplifting and beneficial. You know, it's like people talk about movies and TV and music are haram. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the next episode, inshallah. So, May we be successful in our Toba and Tazkiyah processes, which is a top priority for the Ummah right now because we need to be engaging in the greater struggle individually and collectively. If we are going to see things correctly and we are going to behave in a just and mature, ethical and merciful manner. Inshallah, until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.